Classification of weeds. Weeds are most often classified by their morphology, that is, their physical features, or by their life cycle. As their life cycle affects their physical attributes and both impact crops, it is helpful to know these key elements of the weed you are trying to eradicate. Classifying by life cycle. Annuals are weeds that germinate, flower, produce seeds, and die within one year. They are usually further classified by the period in which they germinate, summer or winter. So let's take the summer annual here. We have the seed in the spring. In the summer, it goes through a vegetative growth. It then flowers. And then finally, in the autumn, it dies, one year cycle. The winter annual starts in late summer, early autumn with a seed. Late autumn, winter, it has vegetative growth. It flowers in the spring and finally dies in the summer. Biennials are weeds that germinate and grow a rosette, which is a non-flowering growth with no central stalk in one year. Then flower, produce seeds, and die over their second year of life. The season of its germination can vary. So here's our seed. In year one, it grows, and then it goes dormant. And then in year two, it grows again, it flowers, and then finally dies. It's a two-year cycle. A perennial is a weed that grows for three or more years. Their underground roots store food that is used by the weed over the winter months. They are further classified as simple or spreading. The life cycle of a simple perennial is shown below. Simple perennials are spread by seed and are often found alone. So we start here with the seed, vegetative growth, it flowers, then it goes dormant, and then the cycle can repeat itself three or more times. Then eventually, as is true for everything, they would die at the end here, and hopefully they would shoot out seeds to start the process again. Spreading perennials live three or more years as well. While they may reproduce by seed, these perennials also spread by vegetative reproduction. So let's look at what that means here. We're going to start with the seed, right? Turns into a seedling, then it flowers, and then it can create new plants when it sets the seeds. And then what we have here, we have two paths. One, it can go back to the seed path or its roots and rhizomes will spread. Rhizomes are underneath the ground there. The plant will overwinter, come back over here, and have more flowers, and then the cycle can repeat. And again, we have several options, right? We can go the seed route or the roots spreading. When spreading by vegetative reproduction, as we showed on the previous slide, the plant sends out runners, horizontal stems, known as rhizomes or stolons. Rhizomes are underground runners, you can see them down here, while stolons spread above the ground. Since rhizomes and stolons generate new plants that then further reproduce, this type of weed is extremely difficult to control or eliminate. We can also classify by morphology. That describes what the plant looks like rather than its life cycle. A weed can be identified with one or both classifications. There are three general weed morphology categories. Broadleaf weeds are dicots as they produce two seed leaves or cotyledons. Most, but not all, cotyledons emerge from the soil. That's down here. They have branched stems and, if flowering, have numbers of petals that are multiples of three. They have wider, usually alternating leaves with net like veins and they have a coarse taproot, a large, central, and dominant root. Grasses are monocots, as they produce only one cotyledon. The coleoptile, a sheath that protects the shoots of grasses and grains, opens as the weed matures. If flowering, they have numbers of petals that are multiples of four or five. They have bladed leaves with parallel veins. They have hollow stems that are rounded or flattened with nodes at inflorescence and they have fibrous roots. This would be a good time to pause the presentation so you can study the different parts of the monocots and dicots. Talk about the embryos here. So here's the one cotyledon, here's two. 
the leaves, parallel veins, netted or branching veins, flowers, divided into groups of three, in this case it's groups of four or five for the dicots, the stems have vascular tissue, and this one, vascular tissue and rings, here they're scattered all over the place, roots, fibrous root system, and a tap root system. Sedges are monocots as they produce one cotyledon. The coleoptile, a sheath that protects the shoots of grasses and grains, usually remains closed. If flowering, they generally flower at the top of the plant. They have bladed leaves in groups of three, and they have solid, smooth, triangular stems.